how do we monitor our water? How do we know when we're running short of water? Well, a lot of it's just trial and error. The more longer you live on your boat, you get to know your boat. Every boat is slightly different anyway. You get to know how it works and when you're running low on certain things. With water, uh, there's normally just two of us, myself, my wife Asia, we live on here. And if we really stretch it, we can make our water supply, which is our water tank is 150 gallons, last two weeks. 150 gallons may sound a lot, but it's when you add up all the little times that you wash your face, you do the washing up, you fill up a saucepan with water. As I'm doing all that, I'm very mindful. Don't leave a tap running because that's wasting water. You know, do you need to fill up to boil some potatoes? Do you need to fill up the saucepan right up to the top? No, just, just enough to cover the vegetables, something like this. So you, you learn to be careful and mindful of how much water, but normally it will last a week, certainly 10 days, if you really stretch it and you're really parsimonious with your water usage, you could stretch it to two weeks. And how do you know it's going down? Well, here again, sounds are very important on a boat. That uh, We have a water pump next to the water tank. And when you turn on a tap, the water pump kicks in and that pumps water through to different parts of the boat, the kitchen and the bathroom and the toilet. Uh, as the water level goes down, so the sounds that, that come from the water pump change. So you know from that that the water level is going down. So a full tank sounds different to a low tank. And the other way you know it is, of course, when you're full up, the, 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 the nose of the boat, the prow, is lower in the water. So as you empty your tank, so the, the prow water tank gets lighter and the boat starts to tip up. So a boat that is really almost empty of water will kind of stick its nose out of the canal. And that, so you can, you just learn these things, you know, bit by bit, uh, how to kind of spot where your water supply is at. You, you have to become very observant. You look at your boat. I. You know, every day I look at it, I look at the front and see what the water level's doing. You know, you, 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 you kind of build up a relationship with your boat. You listen to the sounds, if the engine is making a strange sound or the water tank, what sound is that making? Uh, any other sounds that, that may be strange? You, like recently I was woken on a couple of nights, very early on, like uh, just, at, just around dawn, but a strange tapping on the boat. I thought, my God, what the hell's that? I never heard it before. And you know what it was? It was the ducks feeding off the algae that had collected along the side of the boat. And they, they were tapping away at the boat as they were eating. It was really weird. But you, you listen to these things. And smell is very important as well, because is there um, a gas leak? Well, that's really important because you don't want to gas yourself. Color gas is, which we use, what we use is very inflammable. I have to listen there. And, and very important, we have a smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm as well. So if there's smoke building up, which there should never be, of course, but if there is for any reason, then the carbon monoxide alarm will go off. So this is not a, a, a digital world. This is a physical world. It's, it's very physical. and. After spending years in front of a computer and writing in front of a computer day after day, there's something wonderful about relying upon your senses, using your body uh, in this very physical way. The kind of life that we're developing, where we're so reliant upon electronic media and computers and mobile phones, is it, it's very cerebral, it's very mental. Whereas the life of a boater is very physical. In a, I think in a really good way. What it does, it brings you back to reality. It makes you feel more grounded. This is about really taking control of your life. And, you know, it's been a huge journey for me. It is a kind of hero's journey, you know, where and on the hero's journey, you know, the hero, man or woman, starts off in their comfort zone, right? Wherever that is. 
you know, it could be a little village somewhere or you live in a tower block in central London or wherever and you've got your routines and your, you know, your circuit, you know, your shops and everything else. That's your comfort zone. And to go from your comfort zone into the unknown, that's a hero's journey. And it requires courage to do it and self-belief. It's very challenging. Don't underestimate if you're going to make that transition. You know, be as prepared as possible, learn as much as possible, be, you know, because it will challenge you. Things will come up. You know, uh, there, there is a lot to learn. It's such a different way of life. And there's something beautiful about seeing a narrow boat cruise by, but don't fool yourself. To have that boat, to, to, the, your boat, and you're cruising down the canal, it's a beautiful day. You need to learn a lot and you really need to be in control of your resources, your life. You need to know what you're doing. It has been a massive transition for me and at times really scary. But, you know, you face your fear and you learn more. And as you learn more, so you get more control over things and you, you start to see how things can work and you work out your own path, in effect. Um, so... It, it has been a revelation and unbelievably rewarding as well.